So we're starting with finding the equation of the line through a point, and we're given the slope for it. So if you're given the point and a slope and you want to write the equation for it, you're going to write it in point slope form. That's what we took our notes on at the end of class yesterday, remember. So this is our point slope form. You would see that in your notes. If you forgot it, that's okay. That's why you have notes. That's why you have examples. And so then we are just filling in the pieces to get our equation. So notice, y plus 1, that's because it is y minus a negative 1 here. And then the negative 3, that's our slope. And so I just grab my slope from here. And then the x1, x1, notice, is the x-coordinate, and so I'm just plugging each of those numbers in. Once we have that, then we have an equation in point-slope form. And so, if we have it in point-slope form, we can also then write it in slope-intercept form. So I'd like you to please do that now. Take that equation that we just wrote and write it in slope-intercept form. All right, so in order to turn this into slope-intercept form, I'm first going to get rid of the parentheses, so that means I'm going to distribute in that negative 3. When I do that on the left-hand side, it's still a y plus 1. On the right-hand side, I'm going to do negative 3 times x. That gives me negative 3x. And then I do the negative 3 times the minus 7. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's a positive 21. Okay. We're close now to slope-intercept form but not quite there, because remember, slope-intercept form is the y equals form. And so that means i got to get rid of that 1, so we subtract 1 from both sides. If I do that, then I end up with y equals a negative 3x plus 20. And so then, that is your final answer. That is slope-intercept form. Please graph each of these two equations on their own set of axes. And definitely use pencil for reasons that you'll see very soon. All right, so let's go ahead and graph the y equals 4. Now, if you weren't sure how to graph it, there are different ways you could look at it. You could actually look at it as if like it's in slope-intercept form right now and we have a slope of 0. Uh, you also could do it just in terms of logicking it out. Like, where's a point where y equals 4? And most of us will think of this, the intercept, as a point where y equals 4. But x can be anything with y equaling 4. So actually, it can be anything at the same height. So basically what we end up seeing is that it's a horizontal line. Hence, it has a slope of 0, and it's been shifted up 4. So that's our graph for y equals 4. Then, for the second one, you see the absolute value bars. Whenever you see those absolute value bars, what will the shape of our graph be? Yep, it's going to be a V-shaped graph. We know that. So then it's a matter of just how do these numbers change it. The minus 3. It's subtracting, therefore it has to be a move. Which way does it move it? It moves it to the right, yes. And so this graph is being shifted to the right 3. So we put a point right 3. And then we're going to make our V from there, but our V in this case is not going to go over one, up one on both sides. The 2 takes care of that. Remember, that's a vertical stretch, so it makes it taller. So I'm actually going to go up 2 and over 1. And I'm just going to keep doing that on both sides to make my V. So these are the two graphs that you should have. Uh, kind of just practice of what we've been doing but they also offer a nice little transition because today we're taking what you've been doing with graphing these equations and we're going to extend it to graphing inequalities. So, for the first one, we're not actually just going to focus on it being y equals 4. No, instead, we're going to turn this into a y is greater than or equal to 4. So that's why we do it in pencil because I'm going to have you change that symbol to a greater than or equal to 4. And then for the second one, well, the second one, 
we're going to change that y equals as well. And so go ahead and erase the equal sign. And in this case, we're going to replace it with a less than symbol. So we're now going to be graphing these two. And it really just requires fairly small tweaks to what we've already been doing. For that first graph, the y is greater than or equal to 4. Well, the line is still going to be the same as it was with y equals 4. We still start by graphing the same line. So I would still have that line that you have on your paper, which is why I'm having you do this on the same graphing grid and not have to totally erase everything and do a new one. We start in the same place. The difference is that when we have a greater than or a less than involved, we have to shade it. And so we are either going to shade everything above this line, or we are going to shade everything below this line. And that's always the question we're going to be asking. Is it above or is it below? Now, this symbol right here, y is greater than or equal to 4. Which way do you suppose we would shade for greater than? Above. And so we will. We will shade above on this y equals 4 line. So then this is our final graph that we're looking at for y is greater than or equal to 4. Go ahead and add that shading in. And as you do that shading, it's a little bit easier if you like turn your pencil on its side and get as much lead on the paper contacting it as, as you uh, shade it in. It'll let you give more of a thick shade rather than more of a pointy shade. All right, now that we've finished our first one, we're now going to go on to the second one. So we have y is less than 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. Okay, well, again, the line part of the graph, we build it the same way. We're still going to be going right 3. We're still going to be stretching it vertically by a factor of 2. All of that stuff stays the same, although I'm not actually going to be drawing in a v that looks identical to what I did before, because this is the less than. It's not less than or equal to. When it's equal, we're saying that everything on that line is a valid point. But when it's just less than and not equal to, it's not on the line. It's just going to be where we shade it. And so, as some of you may, yes recall, we make that a dashed graph instead. So, you already drew your graph on solid. A great way to deal with that is just erase little spaces in your graph, and then that makes it a dashed graph. That way you don't have to like erase it and completely redo it. And then, again, it's a matter of shading. And our two options are still the same. We either are shading above the graph, or we're shading below it. And that's it. And if you remember it in those terms, it is much easier to remember what to do. So we take a look at our symbol here, and we just ask ourselves if it's a greater than or a less than. By the way, if you get those mixed up, the sooner you get them straightened out, the better. One way to remember, it's opening towards the bigger stuff, so in this case, the y has to be smaller. Hence, y is less than the other stuff. So this is a less than symbol. Less than would suggest you shade below. And so then, go ahead and shade below that v. Notice it's shading below the entire v, even below the stuff that's gone off the graphing grid.